What's going on, man? It's your boy, Jay Holly. You could have been anywhere in the world, but I'm glad you're here with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. Episode 5 of Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. Man, I am so thankful for all of you being here. It is... It, this ride has been amazing, man. And you know, I always want to give you the positives in the beginning because you might not stay to the end. So let me give it to you on the front end. And, and today, today, you know, I, I do therapy on Wednesdays, right? And so I try to keep my mind and my body and everything all connected and right and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and one of the things that I've talked about for a long time with my therapist is uh, he tells me, Jesse, you're in your your welcome stage. And, and, and while I, I, I get it, I understand it, it's an uncomfortable place, but I wanna encourage some of you, like I've been encouraged, because even though it's uncomfortable, it's a place that, uh, that I had to be in, that I'm continuously in. And your, your welcome stage is, is basically things that you're going to have to do for people, to people, with people, and just say you're welcome. And sometimes when you're in your, your welcome season, you won't get a thank you. You're going to have to just be content with the fact that you were given a gift and you were given a gift abundantly to make sure that you're giving. So whatever season that you may be in, when you enter that your welcome season, don't, don't, don't be discouraged. Don't be upset about it. But you got to just live in that your welcome season. And it's friends, it's family, it's work, it's a lot of different things. But you got to just say you're welcome. You got to just say, you know what, you, I've been blessed with so much, and, and I don't care what God you believe in, I believe in Jesus Christ, and I just say, thank you, Lord, for blessing me more abundantly. Because now with that blessing abundantly, I get to give abundantly. And even if they don't receive it the way that, 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 that or say thank you for the thing that they receive, it's your job just to say you're welcome. So if you're in that season, just say you're welcome. Just smile, even if you have to bite your lip or grit your teeth, just say you're welcome because we all have something to be thankful for. And there'll be one point in time where you're not in the you're welcome season and, and, and someone will be given to you, pouring into you. But don't miss the blessing that you're welcome means that you're walking in abundance. In order to give, you have to have. And so if you're able to give and you're saying you're welcome to a lot of people, whether they whether they give you the reception that you want from it, just be content with the fact that you're able to give. So. You're welcome. Let that be a thought process that holds in your head. All right, let's get right into the swing of things, man. The Cowboys have cut down their roster. All those things have been done. Things have been put in, and we're going to walk through this roster. You know, I, I did my 53-man projection, and I wasn't too far off. And, and what I've been able to kind of see as this thing transformed was this. This team was really, really a built team. Um, I, I saw this stat today that the Cowboys lead the league in about 83% of their team has been homegrown, meaning that a lot of their teams have been roster built, draft built, not bringing in a bunch of free agents, not bringing in a bunch of guys off the street, but they've been draft and groomed and built right here in the DFW for the Dallas Cowboys. 83%. And a lot of times in training camps, you come in and this team is trying to be formulated. And some teams work, you know, work in different ways. Remember a couple years ago, uh, 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 Sneed, the GM for the, for the Rams, his thing was F them picks. He didn't care about his draft picks. He said F them picks. That was, that was their, and they went on to win the Super Bowl. And that was kind of their theme at the parade was F those picks. Now, he didn't have such a great year last year. Could have used a few of those picks. But at that time, he just felt like this was the way to go, right? We, we're not going to be – and the league takes his ebbs and flows about different things that – you know, they said that we're not going to we're not going to worry about developing and drafting and bringing those guys in. We're bringing in ready-made guys right now. We hope that we can make the mesh and gel together and win a championship. And it worked. And a lot of times when you win a championship, you get a little bit of a leeway. You get a couple years to kind of regroup and retool. For the Cowboys, it's been 30 years. It's been a long time coming. And you look at this roster that is the way it's built. There hasn't been much change to it. Outside of, for sure, the, the guys that you brought in uh, that are rookies this year, they're going to be a part of this football team. But the Cowboys hadn't changed much. 
Again, 83%. That's, that's a very, very high percentage in a sport where the roster changes a lot. No roster is ever the same year in and year out because of guys retire, guys get cut, you get draft picks. But to, rate, to, to, to maintain 83% of the guys that you've drafted and brought up, now the Cowboys, they've, they've, had, their, they've had their issues with certain rounds of draft picking, <clears throat> round two. But for the most part, and you, you look at the way that this, this, this roster has been built, and of course, starting with the quarterback, we're, we're going to just kind of just go through the roster and the depth chart of the roster. The Cowboys, of course, I know that you all have heard of the Terry Lance news, and we'll get more into it. I'm going to put this trade dance thing to bed. I'm going to put a bow on this thing, and I ain't talking about it no more. Because no, they, Yeah, I'm going off already. Let's get to the roster, the 53 man. Of course, you got Dak Prescott as your starting quarterback, Tony Pollard, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, who they brought in in free agency, Michael Gallup. Uh, you got Jalen Tolbert, Kavon, uh, Kevontae Turpin, um, and who else did they pick up there? Michael Gallup and Jalen Brooks. That was kind of the the, the one I was uh, I would do. They I, I picked Jalen Brooks. They picked him up and uh, keeping six wide receivers. That's a lot. Um, running backs, of course, Tony Pollard, ten point one million dollars. He's not going nowhere. Rico Dattle is your number back. Your running back two, Deuce Vaughn, and then Hunter Lipke. They kept Hunter. Running back, fullback, however you want to keep it. Tight ends. They kept three tight ends. Jake Ferguson is your starter. Luke Schoonmaker is your draft pick. He's your number two. Peyton Henderson. And I like it. I I'm not mad at that. Here's where it gets a little bit dicey. When you look at what the Cowboys did with their 53, of course, on the surface, all things being equal and everybody starting off on a good foot. This Cowboys offensive line is pretty, is pretty solid. You think about Tyron Smith at left tackle, Tyler Smith, who you haven't heard much about in training camp. That's a good thing. When you have to talk about offensive linemen, you only really talk about offensive linemen in two categories, three categories, really. One, if they get penalties, their name gets brought up. Two, if they have a killer pancake block, usually it's a guy pulling, getting on the outside, and just leveling a DB or safety. Three, if they're getting cooked. You all remember Chaz Green a couple years ago in Atlanta? Exactly. Those are the only times you really hear about offensive linemen names. They, 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 they have a very thankless job. One of the most important jobs on the football field, not much praise. They don't get much praise. But on the, on the surface, on the roster, Tyler Smith, uh, uh, this offensive line has been good. And Tyler Smith, you haven't heard much about him. And that's a good thing. That means, his, that means he's doing well. If you're not hearing about penalties, you're not hearing about him getting beat, you're not hearing about him getting dominated, you're not hearing about him, all these different things, that means he's having a solid camp. Tyler Biotish, he's a guy who's going to be all eyes on him. Made the Pro Bowl last year. Now you got to be able to back that up. Now you have to come into this thing and really back that thing up. Back that thing up. He's a big, Tyler, he's a big, fine center. You got to have to back that thing up, baby. Zach Martin got his bread. He is what he is. He's the president. He's the butcher. He's the most consistent offensive lineman this, uh, uh, this team has had. The incredible stuff I love about Zach Martin, nine years in the National Football League, has more Pro Bowls than he has holding calls. Let that sink in. More Pro Bowls than he has holding calls in nine years. Unheard of. That Zach Martin. And then Terrence Steele, he's coming off the ACL injury. Big year for him. Big year for Tyler Steele. That's the, little, that's, that's the big little cousin of my, of, of my guy, Will Steele. This is his cousin. Bring him to the cookout. Shout out to Will Steele, my guy. See you soon, brother. We'll be doing our thing on Sundays. Oh, I forgot to mention. I've been forgetting to mention this. Like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. I got to do all that. that. That's like the thing that the people do. Like, subscribe. Put the notifications on. We outside. I'm outside. That's the offense. I'm excited about this offense. This offense has the ability to do phenomenal things. When you look at what this offense has been 
in the in the in the, the last couple of years, they they've always been when Dak Prescott has been fully healthy, they've always led the league or and been in the top three to five points per game. Always. Always, always. And I don't care who the offense coordinator was. They were able to put up points, put up yards. Now, they've had their moments. Dak Prescott will tell you, he'll be the first to tell you, I got to do better on the interceptions. That was the Achilles heel of this team last year. But I want, I want people to realize, like, I get it. The ball is in his hands. And, and I blame some of them on Dak Prescott. Because some of these I used to blame on Dak Prescott where I, I, you have that, I call them arrogant throws. And arrogance is not bad. We, we put a bad connotation on arrogance. But we see Aaron Rodgers do it. We see Patrick Mahomes do it. We see the big-armed quarterbacks do it. The thing about arrogant throws or the throws that make you kind of diddy bop and, and go crazy is a lot of times those throws shouldn't happen. And that's the thing that fans fail to realize. Because you'll get a throw and it'll be complete in the first quarter. And I'm watching the game, and I'm like, man, that ball shouldn't have went there. And it gives false hope to the receiver. It gives false hope to the quarterback that I fit it in there the first time. I can fit it in there again. Intercepted. Pass broken up. And those are things that you have to be able to distinguish between a a, a good passer and a, a passer who's taking these risks that ultimately can come back to hurt you. And last year, that was the thing for Dak Prescott. He took the risk, and he kept trying to make up and make up and make up, and he kept making mistakes and making mistakes and making mistakes. And when you think about it, from the grand scheme of things, this is a guy who lined up C.D. Lamb. Because remember, they let they let they let Amari Cooper go. So they lined up CeeDee Lamb. They lined up a guy in Michael Gallup who was clear to play, but I don't think he was 100 he, not think. He wasn't 100% mentally. He said that publicly. And you can tell that his body just wasn't, it wasn't there. And I've been through the whole conversation about once you get cut open, you're never whole again, and some guys just never come back to what they were. Nothing to do with, you know, you just, that's what happens. The more you get cut open, the more you got to go in there and stitch things together and reconstruct things and put things that wasn't originally the, you're not the same. Some guys, but most of the guys aren't the same. And you have to deal with a new normal. But Dak Prescott lined up, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, Dennis Houston, Noah Brown. A lot of y'all told me that James Washington, when he got back, was going to be this savior. I laughed. I laughed. I knew it wasn't. And 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 sometimes Cavante Turpin. This was the guys that Dak Prescott had to go out there with. So I get why he was trying to make things, force things in and make things work because I guess when life throws you lemonade, you try to make and life throws you lemons, you try to make lemonade. That thing was sour. And so now Dak has an opportunity to redeem himself. Because now you line up, I think C.D. Lamb is getting ready to have a monstrous year. I think he's on the fringe of having that converse, of, of putting him in that conversation with the elite wide receivers. I don't think he's there yet. Don't think he's there yet. 1,300 yards last year, nine touchdowns. He's close. He's on the precipice. But he ain't up there with Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, I still, I still consider Devontae Adams in that mix. They, they, those guys are Stefan Diggs. I put them in a different category. But I think CD is not, he's not like the, the, the gap ain't wide. He's on the he's on the fringe. You can even maybe even put Cooper Cup in there a little bit, depending on what how you feel. I think this is the year he takes that step. Um barring any injury. I looked at CD and I'm like, man, I told you guys this before. His man body looks different. He's filling out to that man body. The yak yards are getting ready to pile up. And now that you have a guy like Brandon Cooks who's able to give you a, a viable number two that people have to respect, that people have to honor with players and attention, 
you can't fully lock in on CeeDee Lamb, I think things will be a little bit different. I think that's going to that's gonna lead for Dak having a better season because he doesn't have to deal with that. This is going to suck because my computer is going to die. It's all good. We're rolling. Get to this 53. Um, defensively, nothing changes, guys. If you, were, if you was on the team last year, nothing changed. Demarcus Lawrence, Jonathan Hankins, O.C. Digazua, Michael Parsons, Leighton Van Der Esch, Damone Clark, Devin Harper, Stephon Gilmore, Jeremiah Kirst, Donovan Wilson, who's, who's, who will be coming back soon, Trayvon Diggs, Sam Williams, if he can keep his nose clean, drafted Mozzie, Will, Mozzie Smith, Neville Gallimore set a part of his team, Doris Armstrong. I love, I love, I think Marquise Bell is going to take the next step. I think Marquise Bell is about to take that next step. And, and you're looking at what they have in like Cooker and Donovan Wilson and Jaron Curse. I think Marquise Bell is getting ready to take that next step. Jordan Lewis is coming back. He may not play game one, but he's back out there. No pup for him. Israel Mukwamu, Malik Hooker, Deron Bland. You got guys like Dante Fowler and Chauncey Goldston and Eric Scott Jr. who's on the practice squad, but he elevation, Wanye Thomas. And then the trade that happened, Noah Igbin. Ig, I don't know. Noah Igby. <laughs> Noah. So I'm going there with you. Nashawn Wright's on the IR. And of course, uh, your punter, uh, Brian Anger. I mean, uh, Brian Anger, your kicker, Brendan Aubrey. And, uh, and Trent Sieg is your long snapper. That's the 53. And most notably, guys want to know about this, the, the way the NFL has been able to maneuver and change things out with the, the 16 guys in the practice squad. C.J. Goodwin. Practice squad today, C.J. Goodwin will be one of the guys that they elevate on game day. He's your core special teams guy. Has made a career off that. If anyone's listening, you can make a career off special teams. Look at C.J. Goodwin. Malik Jefferson, a linebacker that they like. Practice squad. Uh, Sheldrick Redvine, safety. These, are, I think Sheldrick is a, a developmental guy. Same thing with Tyrus Wheat, linebacker. Darrell Johnson, DN, developmental guy. D tackle Willington, uh, uh, pre villain, developmental guy. Josh Butler, cornerback, developmental guy. Sean McEwen is coming back. I think that's, just, that's security. Same thing with Princeton Fant, development. Malik Davis, things can kind of get shaky with that running back room. You don't really know what Deuce Vaughn is going to be. You hope you know. Will Rico pan out? They've, they've always liked Malik Davis. Malik Davis was supposed to be the RB2 for a long time. He didn't take the bull by the horns. And then let Rico come in and now let Deuce Vaughn come in and now let Hunter Lipsky come in. But he'll be around. Sean Harlow is center. Brock Hoffman is center. Development, development. Jalen Cropper, development. These guys, Tyron Johnson, they take the role of what Semi Fahoku was, that developmental role. They give it to these guys, and now it's your turn to come in here and develop. Tackle Earl Bostic and tackle Austin Taylor. I'm not going to pronounce his name right, but Austin, you know who you are. Again, developmental guys. All trying to make their way onto the 53-man roster. This team is loaded, ladies and gentlemen. Like, if you think about this team – has everything that you want. Franchise quarterback, star receiver, good running back, pretty good offensive line, barring any injuries, barring any injuries, because if you got to go to the backups, it's going to get bad, real bad, real quick. This defense is stacked. You finally got the big hogs in the middle. You hoping that Mozzie Smith continues to his development, but that's why you have Jonathan Hankins in there. Micah is going to be Micah. Tank is always going to be just this consistent player, he might not wow you anymore. He's going to be consistent. He's going to, he's going to get anywhere from six to nine sacks. Mike is going to wreak havoc all over the place. Leighton Vanderus is your steady Eddie. He keeps everything steady. Well, he's, he's, he's just steady Eddie. Damone Clark has stepped up into that mix. Trayvon Diggs is Trayvon Diggs. He going to gamble, so get ready. But he going to win a lot of those gambles. I told you guys before, I thought Stephon Gilmore... He's, he, he's never been a burner. He lost a step or two. So as long as he don't have to really run after guys in the secondary, he's good. Everything else with his reading, his reacting, his, his understanding of coverage, splits, route concepts, he is the sharpest as the, he's the sharpest knife in the drawer. He's good. He's good at that. 
And then you add J. Ron Curse, who honestly, to me, just me, I know Mike is the man. J. Ron Curse is the heart and soul of this defense. J. Ron Curse is the heart and soul of this defense. Mike is the alien. J. Ron Curse is the one who kind of really holds that thermometer on this defense. That's just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. But J. Ron Curse holds that. Donovan Wilson will be back. And then Malik Hooker on the back end getting everybody lined up. This team is this, this team is ready to go. This is a win now football team. It is built that way. Dan Quinn has gotten everything he's asked for defensively. I want longer rangey corners. Got him. I want longer rangey players. Got him. You got the McQuamos of the world. You had them and the Nation Rights of the world. And you got everything that you asked for. You got the alien and Micah Parsons. You got you wanted some big fat boys in the middle. You got Hankins and you got Mozzie. They gave him a first round pick. They didn't give a first round pick to an interior defensive lineman and got, I don't think ever. I don't think ever. I don't think they ever gave a first round pick to an interior defensive lineman. Dan Quinn has the ear of the owner and the GM. He's gotten everything he's asked for. And the way that this defense is built, it's a 4-3 at heart. But he has transformed this thing into this hybrid 4-3 where he's now using guys like J. Ron Curse and Donovan Wilson and now uh, Marquise Bell as these hybrid linebackers. Or you might go out there and you may say, well, it might be Leighton Van Der Esch or it might be Damone Clark, but these other guys are going to enter the box as our will linebackers. And they're going to be big and strong enough, strong enough and, and fearless enough to stick their nose in there in the run game, but also now being able to cover the running backs because that, that's become a thing. That's become a thing to use the running back now as a dignified receiver. But also being able to stand in front of the tight ends and be able to move laterally and down the field with them because all the, the days of Jay Novacek are gone. The days of the rumbling, bumbling, stumbling tight ends are gone. They, ha-ha, tight ends are, ha-ha now. They, they got this. They like, ha-ha. And so if you can't match the ha-ha with ha-ha, it's going to be this by the referee because they're going to run by your linebackers and your safeties. So this team defensively is built to win right now. And I don't know. That, uh, this team can't, it can't stay like this forever. These windows in the NFL open and close so quick. Because of the salary cap and what you have to pay quarterbacks, you just don't have enough money to spread this thing around. That's why it's imperative for a lot of these teams to strike when their quarterbacks are on their rookie deals because a large majority of, the, majority of the salary cap goes to the quarterback. And when you look at the future, when you start forecasting the future, this is what, this, this what Zach Martin was doing. Zach Martin was forecasting the future saying, hold on now. Oh, hold on now. Mike is getting ready to be the highest paid defensive player in the league probably in NFL history. C.D. Lamb's going to want $30 million plus. Now, nah, let me get mine now. Let me, let me, I ain't going to play with y'all. Let me get mine before I head about the door. Let me get this last lick before I get up out of here. There, there's going to have to be some dudes getting paid. And, and on top of that, Dak's cap hit is going to be $59.4 million next year. So you're going to have to do something with him. You're going to have to work out a new deal with him. And he ain't, you ain't getting it for the low. So now you're talking about Micah, who you're going to pay. Trayvon is still creeping around saying, I want my deal too. CD, you're going to pay. And I don't care who, I don't care nothing about no Trey Lance. You're paying Dak Prescott. You're paying Dak Prescott. Whether you believe or not, the way that this league goes is you don't win without a franchise quarterback. And like I said before, the, the Dallas Cowboys will never be bad enough to find themselves in the top five picks of the NFL draft to draft a franchise quarterback. They've been sure as hell lucky enough to get it in the last 10 years with Tony Romo and Dak Prescott to keep them relevant enough to always keep them as contenders that's where the $9.2 billion come from. 
They've been able, Jerry's been able to sell hope for 30 years. For 30 years. He sold hope. Crack ain't sell that good. Crack hasn't sold that good. Heroin hasn't sold that good. Fentanyl hadn't sold that. Jerry has sold hope for 30 years. At a premium. Frank Lucas said, call it whatever you want. Just don't call it Blue Magic. Jerry Joe said, the hell, I'll call it the Dallas Cowboys. Sniff it. Inject it. Smoke it. For 30 years. He's never going to allow himself to get into the position where this team is no longer relevant. It just isn't. So they're going to pay Dak Prescott. Because as long as you have a franchise quarterback or a quarterback that people deem is good enough to be in the top 10 or 12 in the league, there's hope. There's hope. And nobody has, nobody has put the, the, the hope, the hopium in baggies or bottles and sold it better than Jerry Jones for 30 years. And you buy it. We buy it. Everybody buys it. So I'm talking to you now about it. I get my hit every day it's like you get your hit every day. But this team is built to win right now. Now what will happen when the season comes? No clue. And I'm going to give my predictions and I'm going to give a breakdown of the games and what I think and how it's going to go. None of us have a clue. None of us. The, the fun part about it is this is this this is this is this is the the attic in us, right? This is the the attic in us is that we 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 don't have a clue. We don't. But we'll make these predictions and we'll go do these things and we'll think what we think will happen and then we'll just enjoy this. We'll enjoy the ride. Like that's this is a drug. The highs and lows of the blue magic. This is a drug, and Jerry's the best hope dealer in the business. $9.2 Billy, the most recognizable franchise in all of sports, and he sold us on hopium. Because there's nothing that you can say in the last 30 years that gives you solid, concrete, anything that this is going to be successful. Damn, dude's good. But again, he's put together a team. When you look at this roster, when, I, when you hear the names, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Tony Pollard, when you hear the stats, Tony Pollard was third in the league last year in, 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 in rushing, rushing yards per carry, and, and Dak Prescott finds himself with DVOA, and, and, and this is the top 10 of the quarterback, and, and this many you know, touchdowns, and CeeDee Lamb, 1,300 yards, and this many yak yards, and, 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 and Tyron Smith, the future Hall of Famer, and Zach Martin, the future Hall of Famer, and Micah Parsons, an alien, and, and you just, Trayvon Diggs, he leads the league in interceptions in the last three years. Nobody has more interceptions than him in the last, the, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And you go, man, look at this roster. But we've said this before many, many times about these Cowboys rosters, and it hasn't equated to anything. Regular season, I don't even count anymore. We've passed that. They don't hang banners for regular season. They hang banners to win in February. But this team, the way it's currently constructed, looks damn good. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm excited. Trust me. I'm putting my order in for, for my hope dealer too. <laughs> I'm putting mine in. Give me a kilo of hope. Please. I need a key. Not, not stepped on. Don't step on mine. Don't, 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 don't step on mine. Give me mine pure. Hopium. A key. Please, Mr. Jones. I need the hopium. I'm believing. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm looking at the roster and I'm like, boy. I go to practice. I'm like, boy. Is this? I'm in. They got me. 
I'm in. I know you're in too. I, if you're watching this, you're in. You're looking at me and saying, yup, Jess, you're right. Some of y'all saying, give me two keys of hopium. Give me a brick, two bricks of hopium. Fresh off the boat. Some of y'all been waiting for a long time. Mortgage your house on the bricks of hopium for this Cowboys football team. And Jerry's just been like serving us up. Boom, 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 boom. Like the Carter. <laughs> Y'all see New Jack City? Jerry Nino. And he tell us all the time, sit your file out of I make change. And we sit down. And he's serving us out of the Carter. With AT&T's the Carter. He's serving us out the Carter. Gotta love Jerry. Gotta love him. I love you, Jerry. You've been paying me since 2009. Please don't stop. You got me working in the Carter. I'm in there. I'm in there. But we'll see. We'll see about this football team, man. Like I told you guys before, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a wild ride. So buckle up. This division ain't what it used to be. There, there, there are some competition in this division. So the rosters are set. You know. You look at the one one of the things that people have been talking about this two, this 2021 draft class and how it's kind of, you know, Micah Parsons is in that draft class. And when you get a Micah Parsons type of prospect who, for all intents and purposes, he's probably gonna be a future Hall of Famer. I know he's only two years in, heading into his third year. But if he continues this trajectory, I think uh I think Haggerty's Haggards, who does the the, the who who's the official jacket maker? Of the Hall of Fame. I think Haggard's. Something like that. You might as well start getting his jacket ready. You might as well start getting his. You might as well start tailoring him and up. You got it right. Hagger? Hagger. But you look at this draft class. 11 draft picks in that class. Five of them in two seasons are gone. Jabril Cox, gone. Quentin Bohanna, gone. Simi Fahoku, gone. Matt Farniak, gone. Kelvin Joseph, gone by way of trade. Micah makes up for it. Micah is the cleanser of all draft sins. He's the Messiah. He's the crucifix. He's the one that was spread wide and hung long. Because he's so good. But it's, it shows you this is the 50-50 crapshoot you, every year in the draft. I don't care what round you draft in or how many draft picks you got. You don't know. You, you don't know what it's going to be. You don't know whether that draft pick is going to be a bust or boom. Gold jacket or straight jacket. You don't know. But you go ahead and you, you draft them anyway. You go and you say, hey, this is what the scouts said. This is what the scouts reported. We're going to go with it. But just because these draft classes, you, you, you want to hold on to guys and help them develop and see them develop, sometimes they don't have time. Sometimes you realize we made a mistake. We made a mistake. And no matter how much emphasis you put into it, time, energy, and effort, you go, we made a mistake. And move on. I was shocked to see Jabril Cox go. I was. I thought he was the steal of the draft when they drafted him out of LSU in, in, in 2021. Quentin Bohanna, just you just you ran into a situation where it got really competitive. Happens. You became a casualty. Competitiveness just got too thick. Simi, they gave you chance after chance after chance. And while you had size and speed and potential, there's only so many years they can give you to develop. Three years. He was going into year three. They didn't see it. Matt Forniak, well. I don't want to tell you, my boy. And, and Kelvin, to me, was probably one of the most disappointing. And, and this is one of the things. 
why I'm, I'm not in coaching or scouting and all that kind of stuff because here's what you have to realize, and, and, and I think Kelvin Joseph is one of the great examples of that. Sometimes you hear this in relationships. Sometimes when a person shows you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Believe them. And in scouting and coaching, and sometimes even in life, we try to sometimes go, well, I can probably change him. He just needs to be loved more. She needs to be loved more. And a lot of times, they don't. They are who they are. And you got to accept that, no matter what the talent level looks like. And you heard the things about Kelvin Joseph in school. Started out at LSU, had a situation there, went to Kentucky. And while all the intangibles are there, the NFL and a lot of sports is a lot of, I call it talent versus tolerance. If you're talented enough, if you're talented enough, I'll tolerate you. If you got the goods, I'll tolerate you. But your talent has to continue to rise. Or I'm not going to tolerate you. But I am a firm Firm, firm believer. Firm believer. If you were a fool broke, you're going to be a bigger fool rich. Money is only going to amplify who you are. And I think for Kelvin Joseph, and I'm, I'm not making this personal. But sometimes you have to look at a player and despite the numbers, despite the speed or the, 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 the combine numbers, you got to say, that dude a fool. He a fool. And if I give him, if, this is, if he a broke fool, if I draft him in the second round and give him millions, he going to be a rich fool. And I think for Kelvin Joseph, you see, I mean, you saw what happened off the field. And you saw that a guy in the second round just couldn't figure it out because some people enjoy what football brings instead of enjoying football. They love the jersey. They love the cheer of the crowd. They love the women that come with it. They love the notoriety. They love all those things that come with the game. And that can only... See, it, it works well when you're in a, an atmosphere where your talent will allow you to be better than everybody else because there's a talent deficiency. Some players are just really good. Some people are great. You, you just, but when you get to the league, it's the elite. It's the elite of the elite. Now what separates you? Now some, some just got a lot of eliteness. And they're able to withstand it some you get exposed and if you draft it high enough you really get exposed because more eyes are on you and I think that's what happened with Kelvin and a lot of guys they were they were broke fools and then you gave him millions of dollars now they became millionaire fools and now you have to deal with it and it just never the talent never really shined through because there were so many other obstacles in the way that he just couldn't defeat it happens it happens, but you got to deal with it. And so from that draft class, five guys from that draft class gone. But again, Michael was in that class. He's the Messiah. He died on the cross for their sins. Jabril Cox, Micah died on the cross for your sins. Micah died on the football cross for your sins, Jabril Cox. Quentin Bohanna. Semi Fahoku, Bat Forniak, Kelvin Joseph. They won't talk about this in 10 years when Michael Parsons is defensive player of the year two times and an and all pro and, and, and sacked leader. They won't talk about that. They'll talk about, man, what a great draft that 21 draft was. They got Michael Parsons. That's all they'll talk about. He washed away y'all sins. <laughs> I'm sorry. Micah's not the Messiah. I serve one God and Micah second. No.
<laughs> but Micah, Micah's Micah. We love him. All right. I think that's a, enough of Cowboy football. Let's go around sports. Big game this weekend. TCU, Colorado. Sonny Dykes, prime time. This is, you know, coincidental enough, this isn't, this isn't one of those games where Sonny Dykes was like, you know what, give me prime time. This game was made 10 years ago. It just so happened that prime went to Colorado. They had a home and home, and TCU was up there last year. And, and what a year TCU had last year. All up until the national championship game. But think about that. Like, Think about TCU and the size of TCU. Uh, Texas would love to do what TCU did. Th Texas three times bigger, four times bigger, definitely more money. Texas Tech would have loved to do what TCU did. Think about all the schools in Texas. And TCU had a wonderful season. They beat, uh, they beat Michigan in the Fiesta Bowl, and then they just, they just, they just ran into dogs. Literally, dogs. The Georgia Bulldogs. They just ran into a, they they ran into something that they they didn't matter. It didn't matter. Georgia was on a Georgia was on a they, they, they were destined, and they got dog walk. But it doesn't take away from what they were. And they had media day the other day, and, and, and we were able to get some audio from Sonny Dykes, and he, he just talked about playing Coach Prime in Colorado. <laughs> he said, we got no film. You think, no film? What do you mean? Your cameras don't work? The VCR broke? Nah. The Colorado team that they played last year that wasn't under the coaching of Deion Sanders. 51 transfers. 51. 51 dudes who were not on that football team last year is now currently on that football team. Some of them from Jackson State, where Coach Prime came from. Notably, Travis Hunter, the all-world two-way guy. Notably, Shador Sanders, the quarterback, who some may say, if he has a good enough year, may be a first-round pick. We say Caleb Williams. We say Drake May, go Heels. We say Sam Hartman at Notre Dame, who's been in college for 56 years. Sam Hartman old as me. But you have some publications that say that Shador might be in that mix. I don't know. I'm not a quarterback guru. But... Hell yeah, let's do it. But Sonny Dykes is like, I, I, I don't know how to prepare for him. We can go back and watch some Jackson's, Jackson State film, maybe see some Shador, maybe see some Hunter, but the rest of these dudes from all over. We don't know how Dion's implementing these guys, how they're going to play. I'm sure Dion offensively is going to have some, some of the same, um, I've told you guys before, you know, foundation of foundation is who you are. If that's been Dion offense for the last 10 years, it's going to be the same offense that he runs in Colorado. Players are different. Players are definitely going to be different. 51 transfers. So for Coach Dykes, he, he got to just figure out a way to kind of get this thing. You got to get up. Play your game. But it's hard to watch tape on a team that you have no idea about. It isn't like this is a team that you, you're familiar with, that you've played every single year. 50, that's unheard of. 50, a college football team is anywhere between 80 to 90 guys. Depending on how big your program is, maybe 100 if you're one of the really big, big programs. Think about having half of, if you're a roster of 80 guys, I'm not a math major here, wasn't my strong suit. But if you're a team of 80 players and you turn over 51 of them, that's literally a new school, a new program. So I get, I get Sunday night. And this is a big game. This is a big game for TCU because they want to be able to 
to ride the wave of what they were last year. That helps in recruiting. That helps in uh, 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 donations. The boosters feel like, hey, we rolling. That's, they, their checkbooks get open. Y'all see what Johnny Manziel did to A&M? Y'all see what RG3, ride down 35 to Waco. The house that RG3 built. You start winning. Donors all of a sudden get happy. Checks get written. And so a lot of those guys who were part of that team last year have that chip on their shoulder of, yeah, I know we got embarrassed against Georgia, but we want, we, we, we want in. Run it back, Turbo. I don't know if they want to see Georgia again because that's Georgia. Georgia has found their groove. Kirby Smart and company. A lot of people said that Alabama will be back this year. Cool. In order to beat the man, you got to beat the man. But that doesn't take away that, that, that TCU can't have similar success. Maybe not the national championship game again, but what you don't want to do, you don't want to go from the rise of a national championship game to barely making a bowl game. That you got to keep that momentum going for recruiting because they'll tell you, any coach will tell you, in any state, what is the number one thing you want to do in recruiting? Win your state. I got to win my state. Now, I don't know how Texas is doing it. My really good friend and brother, Tashar Choice, is the running back coach at Texas. One of my favorite coaches of all time, Jody Camillus, is the special team coach at Texas. And I asked them both religiously, constantly, how many scholarships do y'all have? Because uh, every, every single day I look up, another five-star. Uh, how many do y'all got? But for TCU, do I beat Texas in the recruiting battle? Probably not. They pockets long. But can I win? Like, I... If I can't beat Texas, I can't lose to Texas Tech. I can't lose recruits to SMU. I can't lose recruits to Oklahoma, to, you know, the surrounding cities. How do you do that? You keep showing up in the college national playoff games. Players want to come play for you. And this, this area that we sit in, in the DFW area, is rich. Duncanville, DeSoto, Cedar Hill. Allen, McKinney, Mesquite, uh, 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 Alito, um, Melissa, you, you name it, the, the list goes on. And I'm, if I'm forgetting anybody, my bad. So there's more than enough athletes. But it's going to be a big game. It's going to be a huge game for TCU. Because you want to kind of, you want to carry that momentum. You want to be able to say that wasn't a fluke. Because a lot of people say, hey, it's a fluke. The quarterback that, that ended the year wasn't even the guy who started. Y'all didn't even believe in Max Duggan to start the year. It was someone else. He got hurt. Here comes Max Duggan, and, and, and the Cinderella story takes off. How do you continue to do that? It's a huge game. It's a huge game for Colorado. However you feel, like Dion has, he has the Floyd Mayweather kind of syndrome put on him. Everyone is either watching for the plane to crash or the car to crash over the, for the triumphant victory. That, those are the only two. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. There is no, oh, I'm on the fence. People like Deion Sanders, are. you're not on the fence about Deion. You love him. You hate him. You want to see him win. You want to see him lose. You want to see him blow folks out? You want to see him get the doors beat off of him? That's it. That is it. There is no in-between. There is something like, you know what? I kind of like, you might be, you might have some great people about Sonny Dykes. Well, you know what? He's all right. He's okay. Don't, don't love him. Don't hate him. Good dude. All right. Yeah. Not Dion. Not Dion. And Dion has even said in an interview, he goes, man, my whole life, I've been him. And I've heard the noise and the chatter, and all I've done is prevail. To his credit, he's right. He's been the baddest dude on the planet everywhere he's gone. High school, college, NFL, MLB. 
coaching. He's won at life. Must be the money. He got fine women, got successful kids, lives on a half a damn county. He got one of the best names in sports. His swag is un impeccable. But you either love him or you hate him. And for Dion, you want to start that program in the right place? Because people think that, you know, oh, it's cool at Jackson State. You were good at Jackson State. And, and, and that, that, that's not going to translate. You're with the big boys now. This ain't a little HBCU where you can kind of just, you know, get an athlete here or there and that be that. Nah, you with the big boys now. I, I, and I think even for this year, for Dion, if Dion gets his team bowl eligible, win. That's a win. This team was booty juice the last couple years. Trash. And if Dion can get this team to five, six wins and get them bowl eligible, that's a win. That's how you build a program. But folks want to see him down bad. I know they do. You hear it. I want to see him win. I, 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 I am the person who I love arrogant, cocky, flamboyant, loquacious. I love it. I love it if you win. But if you lose, I love when they get on your head. Pause. God, I always say that for the young people. And Dion, like he said, we coming. I love that. We coming. I ain't hard to find. And I'm bringing my luggage with me. And it's Louie. Woo! And it's Louie. I love that. I talk. Ooh, I love talk that talk. And he did. He said, you know what? I'm bringing Shador. My quarterback. He let him know from the jump. This is my quarterback. This y'all quarterback. Ain't no competition. Y'all can say whatever y'all want about nepotism. It happens all everywhere else. Everybody else do it. Why not Dion? So miss me with that. And then he said, uh, 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 I'm bringing Travis Hunter. One of the baddest two-way players in the league. Remember, Travis Hunter was on his way to Florida State. So don't, 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 don't think that Travis Hunter, he's like, oh, this is Nah, he flipped. Travis Hunter reminds me, um, and we were talking about this pre-show, you guys remember Chris Gamble, Ohio State? He was one of those two-way guys, defense, offense. It was damn good at it. Went like number 28th in the draft in the year that he came out. Uh, that, that, that Travis Hunter has that. Travis Hunter has that ability where he can lock you up on defense. And then they call it bean. The young kids call it bean top now. Ha. Ah, I call it moss. You might most. Y'all call it bean top or on your head. Whatever. But Travis Hunter, he, 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 he could go. He could go. So huge game, man. Huge game. We'll see what happens. The start of the, the, the Deion Sander-led Colorado Buffalo starts this weekend against TSU. TCU. Excuse me, not TSU. I'm going back to HBCU. Shout out to TSU. My niece wants to go there. Yeah. I ain't got nothing against y'all. I don't. Y'all ghetto, though. My little niece like, I want to go there. My people's there. All right. But TCU versus Colorado. It's going to be big. It's, uh, it's in Fort Worth, right? Yep. It's in Fort Worth. It's going to be big, man. And, 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 and you know, Deion got a lot of love around the DFW. A lot of love around the DFW. We'll see. Sonny Dykes, this is your, this is, what, you know, how do you, how do you follow up a national championship game? Despite the outcome. That's big. So, Sonny Dykes, how do you follow that up? Do you follow that up with a loss to the opening of the season to, to Deion's Colorado? Or do you go in and say, let me take care of business. Let me, let me put folks back on notice again that TCU wasn't a fluke. That, it is big for both coaches here. This is a, this is a big game. Because if Dion wins this game, it's kind of like nut drop. Like, I'm letting my nuts hang. I'm here. And you know Dion going to strut. 
And for Sonny Dykes, it's like, yo, you can't let Lil Bro come in here and just dominate, you know, win this game against the team that went to the national championship game last year. That That's not a way. Now, how you finish is how you finish, but how you start also matters. People will look at you sideways now and say, oh, the Horn Frogs was a horn front. They were fronting. They ain't real, real. They ain't really real. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> to the world of the NBA. I love the NBA because the NBA, the, I love sports. This is why I'm here. This is my gift. Thank you, Lord. But it's I I I I laugh because this is athletes in general. There's so many fragile athletes. And it seems like more and more is in the NBA. And the, the thing is these burner accounts. Right? These burner accounts are popping up. But this isn't the, this isn't an NBA player. This was a referee, Eric Lewis, who, who, who had a burner account and was defending referees last year during the playoffs. Adam Silver got him up out of there. He handed in his resignation, retiring. I should say he handed in his retirement papers. They were investigating his burner account. The writing's on the wall, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of like almost being honorably discharged. It's one of those things where Adam Silver goes, if it comes out through our investigation that you actually had a burner account and you were actually engaging in this kind of thing, it, it's, it sullies the league a little bit. It puts a smear on us. We, are, we still haven't gotten over fully the, 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 the referee, Tim Donahue, Tim Donahue Donahue, who was betting against the game. That's a, that was a huge thing. People ain't forget about that. So whenever you have officials of the game that's supposed to have the integrity of the game in mind, and that's selling in some sort of way, brings the value of your game down. People can't trust it. Steph Curry, why are like, the league is, the league is rigged. And when you have something like that happening... Her cries get louder and louder. They start to believe it a little bit. So Adam Silver was like, you know you did effed up, right? What was that movie? And he's like, you know you did effed up, right? And he's like, just retire. If you retire, then we don't have to say that we found stuff out. You just go away. Just go away. Just, just go away. No, we're not giving you a severance package. And you're going to sign this NDA because you're not going to do a tell-it-all book. Or anything else to try to expose the league. But I always find it funny about burner accounts and players or owners, whoever. Just, I mean, and I say we because I used to live that life as a professional athlete. People go and talk about you, man. And if you're not thick-skinned enough to just ignore the noise, that's more of a you problem, man. Like, it's the internet. If you haven't realized now that there's a bunch of people who get on this app and all they want to do is troll, that's, their, that's the, literally they wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to troll. And I get it. You're human. You're frustrated. Things happen. But you ain't got a burner account it because now, now you look like a sucker. You look more a sucker than the people that's trolling. Be you. Say what you got to say and get up out of there. But the whole burner account thing is, is, is weird to me. Now to the MLB. And I told y'all, I'm going to always tell y'all this till, the, till I have no more breath left. I don't condone violence, but I understand it. This past week, fans again run on to the football, to the football, to the baseball diamond in the outfield at Coors Field. Where is Coors Field? Where is that? Colorado. Colorado, that's right. Coors, the beer, right? Maybe these people were high. Maybe they were on edibles. But MLB All-Star and one of the most recognizable faces in baseball, one of the young guns, Ronald Acuna Jr., 
is in the outfield and is basically mobbed by two fans. First of all, where the hell was security? Y'all keep hiring these old dudes. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all keep hiring grandpa and them to be field level security. I'm not saying that you gotta how you gotta you gotta hire uh, Chris Kyle. I'm not saying that you gotta hire Batista. I, I'm not saying you gotta hire them dudes. But you gotta get the AARP dudes off a of watch. You gotta get the 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 the, the dude who's collecting social security off of watch at least at field level now maybe you you have them up in the stand somewhere else or or, or, or out the door but where, where, where you need some swift acting people i'm not fat shaming but if they as if they are as wide as are they as, as tall maybe they shouldn't be at field level MLB All-Star Ronald Acuna Jr. is in the outfield doing his job. Not one, but two fans run onto the baseball diamond in the outfield. And they mob Ronald Acuna Jr. Now, thankful and, 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 and extremely fortunate that he wasn't harmed, hurt in any way, shape, or form. But do you understand? There was a lady the other day at the Orioles game who smuggled in a gun. White Sox. White Sox game, excuse me. Chicago, the White Sox game. Thank you. Who smuggled in a gun, so they say, in the fats of her belly. And the gun went off at the game. We, I'm sorry, folks, we don't live in the field of dreams. Kevin Costner isn't walking out the cornfield. We live in a broken society. It's foul. And foul things are happening. My thoughts and prayers to the people at the University of North Carolina to their faculty, to their students, a guy just got killed, a professor. People are getting shot and killed all over this country. We have to do it, and I'm not saying this because he's an athlete, I'm saying this in general. Two, two fans ran on the field. I don't know what the distance is between the field, and but I'm a good 20, 30 yards. They had to run out there, and they were able to get to Ronald Acuna Jr. and hug on him and grab on him, knocked him over, before anyone remotely close got to them. I'm not saying that I promote violence, but you got to start roughing these folks up. There needs to be a precedent set that you can't just run on this field. Because you want some likes for your TikTok? Start busting these jokers in the head. I don't condone violence. I'm saying I understand it. But that is unacceptable, MLB. Coors Field. That shouldn't happen, ever. Fans should not be able to run 30 yards you, these these players these are these are million hundreds of million dollar players. Again, I'm I'm not saying that you gotta you gotta hire the Navy SEALs. Get Grandpa off watch. I'm sorry, Grandpa can't be at ground level. Uncle Fester can't be guard the dugout. Uncle Ed can't be in charge. He sleep. He dozed off. 
Oh, man, what happened? People on the field. No. Do better. And that's in all sports. But far too often you see these things happen where people are able to run into these different sports arenas and fields and all these contests. You know who I know they won't run up on? Y'all won't run up on Messi. I bet that. You know who Messi got with him? Messi has a retired, he got a Navy SEAL. I don't know if that's in the Inter Milan contract. Messi has a former Navy SEAL or special ops dude, somebody that'll put you in one of these. He put you in one of these yo- in the, one of these yokes, choke you out. Messi got one of them dudes that'll put you. He put you in that yoke. He put you in that yoke. Hey, shut up. Shut up. And you sleep. He just drop you. They ain't running up on Messi in Miami. He on the field walking back. As Messi go, he go. I don't know. I don't know how much that costs. You ain't running up on Messi. Floyd Mayweather, you see the, you see the, shout out to my Samoan brothers, you see them people eaters he got with him? Damn! People forget that Floyd like 125, 35 pounds. He got people eaters with him. Them jokers will eat you alive. Hire some of them. There's no way that should happen at the major league level. In any field. A gun is smuggled into a stadium? Come on, Chirac. Come on, Southside. Come on. At what point in time do we take this thing a little bit more serious? No way that should happen to, Ronald, to any player. Not just Ronald Lacuna, but any player. And it's happened far too many times. In all sports. We see it happen on the football field and the football player knocks the guy over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens when he st- somebody gets stabbed? Shot. And I know I'm kind of taking it to the extreme, but turn on the news. The extreme is happening. There was a point in time when you thought you can go to church and be safe. Can't now. There was a time when you thought sending my kids to school was a safe place. That's changed. There was a time in our society where I'm running down to the local Piggly Wiggly and I'm going to pick up some bread, some eggs, and some milk. Come on back to the crib. To ShopRite, to Pathmark, to Kroger, to Harris Teeter. That's a fearful thing now. So what I'm saying is not crazy. It's happening everywhere. And for those arenas and those sports teams to not have that kind of under control where two people could run on the field 30, 20, 30 yards away, these people run and nobody gets to them in time, that could have been bad for Ronald Acuna. We don't know what people had on them. We don't know, we don't know what they had. A, they had a knife. Or they want to do some bodily harm and, 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 and take a knee out, shoot them. I don't put nothing past people now. Because every single day I'm reminded that we live in a broken, fallen, crazy world. Got to do better. As a people. But especially as sports franchises. And I know I'm spending y'all money, owners and GMs, but come on. Come on. You had that. He's a visitor. You gotta take care. You gotta take care. You gotta, you gotta take care of the people better. The players are better. And, and I know that they maybe people are gonna say, well, maybe they should buy their own security. Well, maybe the the, other, the company should do better. The franchises should do better. I know. I know. Uncle Fester is on a fixed income and he need a little part time job. That's cool. Put him at the concession stand. Put him at the bathroom. Don't put him at security on the field. Because someone's going to end up getting hurt. Someone's going to end up doing something crazy. 
whether it be for likes or whether it be because that Joker really is off his rocker and wants to make a statement. Don't tell me that's unheard of or it's Jesse's making things up. Nope. Nope. No. I see it every single day. And honestly, the sports arena is probably the one place right now that kind of hasn't been targeted. I want to put that in the atmosphere. Schools, churches, grocery stores, different ethnicities. They did the Boston Marathon a couple years ago with the bomb. I mean, look around, people. These folks don't care no more. Some of them is just, some of them are just off their rocker. Some of them, excuse me, are dealing with mental health issues. Some of them are just, some of them are just looking, they're evil. But what happened to Ronald Cunha Jr. should not have happened. This shouldn't be a, a this shouldn't be a recurrence. Start busting these jokers in the head. Crack him in the head with them Louisville sluggers. Send a message. Don't lock him up in a little prison underneath there and give him a fine and they say you can't come back to nah. Leave him leaking. Send a message. The, you, know, you watch the cartel movies. I, you know I like the movie like Sicario and Sicario 2. The, the, the cartel, like, you ever watch them, like the Sicarios? You ever watch the Sicarios? And leave a message. Bodies hanging from the bridge. I'm not saying do all that. But some of them, you got the little bats at the baseball game? When you go to Cooperstown, you get the little bats. Crack them in the head. Leave them, leave them leaking to the white meat. <laughs> you leave them leaking to the white meat, they're going to be they gonna be hesitant to come back. You you let you let Uncle Festa go and, and, and you bring in you 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 bring in uh Charles that was discharged from the Navy two years ago a little off Charles will crack him in the head Boop! I know loss is gonna come but if you come on the field then you're all fair game leak leak him Bust them in the head to the way. <laughs> no, I'm playing. But no, I'm serious. All right, man. That's it for me. That's it for me. I appreciate you all for joining. Like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. Episode 5 is done. I hope I cracked y'all in the head. Hope you had a good time. Until next time, I'm out. Oh, and never... Let anyone tell you that their life is better than yours because it's yours. Eliminate the contingencies. I'm out.